and welcome to the Mission TV show. I'm Natalie Wood and I have some special guests with me today, but before that, I'd like to share with you a special text and it, it just really speaks to me as to the Lord's will and his longing for his children. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee and the Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy rising. That's from Isaiah chapter 60, verses 2 and 3. I have Joshua Subash with me today and Henry and Allison Toms. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. And um, earlier in the earlier session that we did, we were talking with Henry about his experiences in India when he went to do some medical missionary training there. So Henry, would you like to continue sharing with us of your experiences there? I'd be happy. Um, in the last episode there, we were mentioning about reaching the unreached. And some of the people, I'd say majority of the people over there are really unlearned. And uh, this is one of the things that Wildwood has also given an emphasis on, is training missionaries to bring them abroad, and then they, in essence, are to train others. And this is what I had mentioned in the last episode, was that the students that uh, we come to train, they also go out into their own country and teach the people there of the blessings that God wants to give them, physically, mentally, and also spiritually. Now, one of the things that I had really seen was that because of people over there, the sanitary conditions are not all that great. Even in this village, I mean, this is actually a clean village, but many of them, you know, they just don't have all the different privileges, even, you know, the showers. It's very open and, you know, it doesn't give much privacy or anything like that. So um, with this, we are trying to teach the people, you know, with health and also with sanitation and things like this. And some of the people that we had the opportunity of teaching, they were on fire for the Lord. Mm. One of them, Vasudevan in this picture, he's the young man there with the T-shirt. Okay, so this young man here. That's correct. Okay. So now he was really on fire. He had a background as a Protestant. And when he had come to the training, there were various different things that he had dealt with. But as we kept on talking and answering the different questions, it was like all his doubts disappeared and he became so on fire for the Lord that he also had decided to go minister to the Lord with as little as he had, which was nothing. Mm -hmm. wow. He had a burden for some of the villages, and he had gone into a village where there were no Adventists. He and his friend Bakiraj, he's the one that has a yellow shirt. The other gentleman, okay. <clears throat> That's right. And so, they didn't know where to stay or anything. And they says, Lord, we don't want to spend time searching for a place. And we just ask you to find us a place so that we can reach these people. They had gone to the village and just coming into the village, they didn't know where to go. This older lady happened to come up and they seen them and she just came to them and says, what are you looking for? And he says, we're looking for a place to stay. I says, oh, I know where you can stay. Come and follow me. And yeah. so they ended up just following her. And they came to this little room where this picture is at. And it, it's really simple. All there is is a tiny little desk in the corner and maybe a little chair. And that's it. And from here, they had then gone out and uh, gone to the village people, teaching the people um, the message. Now, how did they get into the village people's homes or how did they connect with the village people? What did they use to do that? That is a very interesting one. I was actually very curious about that one myself. I happened to ask Vasudevan as well what he had done. And what he had done was he had a little tract he wanted to introduce to the people knocking on a door there and and um, he was just asking, well, how is your welfare? And then the people would respond, well, oh, not so good. And this is, well, what is the matter? 
And so as the people had described their particular ailments, then he says, oh, can I actually serve you doing some hydrotherapy treatment? These people had accepted it. Mm -hmm. And so with a couple of towels that they had, they had given them the hydrotherapy treatment. And they had also, during this year time, given also the message of the gospel of Christ. Mm -hmm. And as the people started feeling better, then all of a sudden they um, happened to mention, oh, we know also such and such. We'd like you to also go over there. And so, so they kept on spreading. Yeah. The blessing was spreading. Exactly. So they kept the on referring news. from one person to the other. And good. so uh, one example is, say, for example, within five days, they ended up um, leading nine individuals into a church. Mm. Wow. Mm -hmm. And um, it was also mentioned to me that there is, I mean, you know, this is actually a picture of one of the churches. And we're showing here that majority of these people that you see here, these are individuals that this young man had brought to the church. Wow. And they're very simple churches that they have over there. But uh, we could, I actually started understanding also how God was using the right arm work in reaching the people. It was opening the doors. It was opening and the doors. And not just the one door. It was more and more doors as they shared. That's right. And I even understand that uh, he was so active that within three or four weeks, he had brought 30 individuals into a church. Wow, praise the Lord. What a blessing yes. that is. Well, thank you for sharing with us, Henry, from your experiences there. And I'd like to ask Joshua now to share some more. There, mm -hmm. were, there was more training. Mm -hmm. This was January. And then what happened in February? So we had, uh, in January, we had uh, all the eight schools were going on. In the February, we had four schools, three in India and one in Nepal. Okay. And uh, so we had this uh, here in, again, these are the January schools. Okay. And uh, we see these are the... So the yellow ones are February. Yeah. Or the February, orange. orange. Okay. In Nepal. So it was also a tremendous blessing. We had some uh, students, many of them trainers, went back to the country, but some did stay and they continued on helping uh, for the second uh, month also. Okay. And during those times, uh, even before I go to India, I called a pastor and I said, Pastor, we are just bringing people from America and we want to train uh, your pastors for health. I was speaking to your president and uh, he said, fine, uh, that would be okay, but uh, you need to provide the housing and the food and all these things. He's, we said, wow, we are bringing people, we are bringing the resources, everything is free. But he said, uh, but they cannot afford to stay for a month with their own expense and mm -hmm. all these things. So I was kind of discouraged in the beginning. Okay, in the month of February, what happened there in January was, all the presidents from each conference all over India, they had a conference just near the, tra uh, near the place where we were having the training, that is in the South okay. Nagar Koyal. And so all the pres uh, presidents and secretaries, everybody came there. We were, went there because someone was sick. One of the presidents, President Rat Sarah was there and her wife was sick, his wife was sick and we had just went to give some charcoal and to help. While we were there, we offered them, we would like to give you a massage. And then we gave some massage to some of the presidents over there. And we also could be able to share uh, our message. And uh, one president, one of my friend was massaging, uh, Sean, and he just raised his hand, he said, wow, I couldn't be able to raise my hand beyond this before, but I could be able to do it now. And he was just waving his hand here and God there, and he said, good. praise the Lord, and please come to our place and train our pastors. That is the very pastor that I spoke before I went to India. How God brings right the pastor there. And yes. we could be able to massage him. And he's inviting us back to the place. And was, this is the medical conference where all the presidents and the secretaries were there. Okay, and so the a, Lord used it yes. to be a blessing and a testimony. Yes, it was a blessing. All right. And uh, so the plans were continue going on. 
and all the February schools were over. And then we had the six month training we are planning for. And that's the College of Medical Evangelism. Uh, that is a, a three month uh, course also was going, okay. This is the hospital that we had the training. This is called AG Hospital that is located in Nagarkoy, south of India, Tamil Nadu. And um, this hospital is one that closely works along with the blueprint that we have, mm -hmm. how we need to follow God's uh, method of healing the sick. And this doctor uh, has implemented, like they have Spirit of Prophecy bookstore there, and we have health food products, uh, and we also have like Russian steam bath, in just what we could have, mm -hmm. just very simple. Now, is this in South India or North India? In South India. In South India. Uh, yeah, okay. in Tamil Nadu. Okay. And, uh, so they use just in whatever we can, just a steam cooker and just they use a simple means, however we could be able to use it. So, and uh, we have herbs, a lot of herbs to treat. And even the doctor was trained in allopathic medicine. Doctor, he's the doctor, Dr. Enoch. And he's doctor. He has been a great guide for me because I alone could not have done what I did. He has been a great part in counseling, how wisely I need to act, how God puts to a person, how I need to be acting. So it was a blessing to be there. And he's a past chaplain over there and a pastor, Pastor Arvaki Raj. And uh, even we get to see so many results by using simple means. And uh, so this is a uh, God stone that is coming out of this woman. And wow. by simple natural remedies, just apple juice, uh, uh, lemon juice, and all these things. So olive oil. So we get to see people, uh, students could be able to experience some of those. We started working on the classrooms, and we got the chairs at the end, at the, at the end of the time. And these are our students and uh, the teach presenters. Sometimes we have teachers coming from UK, and they teach and uh, some of our students there. And so, students get to experience a lot of things, yes. Okay, so some of the students had the medical blessings yes. that they needed. Yes. And then they were able to learn it and share it with yes. others. Yes, yes. Wow. So while we were teaching itself, we trained them to be uh, kind of not just learning and just sit, but we want to train them to establish something because they will keep on going, the work will keep on going. So we teach self-supportive work and uh, classes there on self-supportive. So this is some of the classes, the students were there, presenting there and they could experience the testing of the lab. And even we get to use on the students, uh, some of the charcoal polters. And we also have some retreats. Uh, we go to Ireland to have a suspend a Sabbath over there. Oh, that's a blessing. <laughs> that's been a blessing. So doc, we have a hands-on experience over there, and doctor deals with each patient, uh, and he explains and all the natural remedies that he uses there. And students were greatly blessed by all this work. And especially we worked on a cancer patient. And uh, he's a cancer patient, actually. I like to show. And they get to work on uh, dressed wounds. And uh, so students were just, uh, they never explained, they never seen blood and they're not comfortable with that at all. But uh, when they get and they come to that experience, it helps them to come to that level of experience. And especially this brother, they are brothers. And uh, so this is Mr. King and this is brother Lenin. And he is a drug addict. And he's, in the high school he studied with me and after he left, and we never met each other after, but I, he was there as a student. Okay. And he was so surprised to see me there, and I was surprised to see him there. But um, he was not any interest to be in a school. He just came there because his brother called him. But he doesn't want to take the Bible, he doesn't want to read the Bible. When he came to the class, he was so surprised to see how people pray for everything. What? And uh, so he finally able to get the Bible to the class and he slowly he started opening the Bible, he started reading the Bible. He was touched with the message that was shared. And he said, there are so many people in my place that is Northeast Manipur and uh, they are drug addict. We want to go and really start a rehabilitation center there. And while they were in the course, they called the parents and they said, please set the home like this, set this like this, set this like this. Get it ready. Yes, get it ready before we could even go, go there. Uh, wow. Just right after the finish, they went back. Not even a month has passed. 
they started a ministry called Springs of Healing. Okay. And now, uh, with the help of several midwives, they have uh, they, uh, a lady uh, gave birth to a child, and they are just helping several uh, people there. It has been oh, such blessing. a blessing. Wow, so they had one month training. No, they have started a sanitarium, home sanitarium. But they went center. through the one month yes, training? six month training. Six month training, yes. okay. So they went through the six month training. Yes. And then they told their parents, get it ready. Yes. And then they came home and now they're being able to be a blessing and share what they've learned. Yes. <laughs> That's what the Lord wants it to do. True. Widening and widening True. circles of blessing. True. So they're confident enough to go and as a start. And um, we have another young people, while they were in the course, they started taking videos of the classes, Daniel and Salvation and all these things. And then uh, they said, we want to do something. We are getting all these messages, but we want people to also get, receive the messages. So they started taking the video. They themselves, they are 14 years old, 15 years old. They started editing the videos and making the label for it and making the cover for it. And they named it as Acts Media Ministry. Uh, like Acts of Apostles, they want to be as them. And they started Acts Media Ministry. And here is uh, the purpose of the ministry. They themselves sent the PowerPoint that we could be able to show to encourage the young people to uplift the Bible and the spirit of prophecy, to have a revival and reformation, to uplift the standards of Adventist Church. And so these are their purpose for the ministry. And we see what they have uh, done. He, is, um, he also invited to go and preach in different places over there. He is uh, Paul Nyanaraj uh, over there. And this is uh, the youngest person. This is my brother, actually. And he is uh, Samuel David. And he's good in computers. He helps to edit and all these things. And we have this sister, Karen, Rebecca, and she, her calling, she said that she wants to go and spread the mes health message seminars many places. After she finished, she was invited to the North to go and conduct a health seminar there at this age. And wow. God is... This so is, she's young. Yes, she's, she's really She's like young. a teenager. Yes, yes. Wow. How God could use them. Yeah. And uh, so they Powerful. themselves designed this uh, nice. salvation series. And this is the thing. So, finally, we were planning to have a medical seminar, but I couldn't be able to have it because I didn't have the time to do it. But somehow I was praying that someone need to do it. But uh, by the grace of God, Mr. John McKee, you know, they organized a, a medical seminar in the North. They, they invited us, and we could be able to present a chance to the people there. All the doctors from all the Adventist hospital and also from other hospitals. They came, CMC, Vellore, and all these hospitals. And while we were there, we could be able to present some of the messages. This is the place we had. It is in Jalanda. And this is hospital wants to like to be a, a lifestyle center there. And so these are the people that came and they helped uh, to start a lifestyle center there. Okay. And uh, so while we were having the medical seminar. Okay. Uh, okay. So, oh, sorry. And, <laughs> it's all right. uh, so, during this, many doctors were touched, and they said they would really like to uh, have the lifestyle program going on in each of the hospital. They said it is very hard to accept that these simple things can able to cure. And mm -hmm. we have studied four years in the hospital, and you said these things can cure, and they are so much blessed. There are some physicians in tears. They said we really need this. Could you able to send your students to train us? Wow, what a blessing. And uh, so one of the best uh, students that we had was from a fisherman community. And these people, when they heard the message, they said, wow, you say that we cannot be able to eat fish? If we cannot be able to fish, how can we Live. sell it to others? Okay, well, yeah. But they decided to stop doing the work. They stopped fishing. Now they were carpenters electrician, driving auto rickshaws, and going in the bus as conductors. Two of the girls from there came and took the six-month course. They are the best students that we have, and we want to have them as a teachers for the next course. But we also want to go and train even the doctors. So this is what, so far, what has happened. So you're sending these two young ladies from yes. the fisherman community yes. to train the train doctors. Train the doctors the and physicians. Wow, yeah. what a blessing that is. <laughs> 
Now, Allison, you had a few things to share with us at this point. I, it was a blessing to uh, also have them to be a part of this ministry. And uh, they have been a blessing coming over there and sacrificing the privileges and to help there and also continue to be a part of this ministry for this further development. Yes, I'm yes. glad to be <laughs> them here. Yeah. Well, at Restoration Ministry, um, they have some future projects that they want to include um, to reach some of the upper class. They want to um, start a, a journal on health, a magazine to reach the upper class in India. And um, they want to expose natural remedies in this magazine, and they want to talk about nutrition, hydrotherapy, how mm -hmm. to do that simply in your own homes, community, charcoal, the uses of these sort of things. And will this, will this start out in English? Yeah, basically in the first place we want to have it in English all over India. And then we want to form a very good team in each state that could translate in local language and give it to the people. Okay, mm -hmm. good, that will be a blessing. Uh -huh. Um, they also would like to make, start producing professionally made DVDs, um, sermons on health and education and demonstrations. In these uh, demonstrations and lectures, it just gives a more overall understanding of what we're teaching in, the, in this ministry, in the six-month courses, mm -hmm. in these light programs. And they can take these into their home. Um, we want to have it available so everybody will get it. Mm -hmm. Not just only the upper class, but the young people mm -hmm. alike. Mm -hmm. And then um, we want to go on to record Ellen White books in their local language. Here in America, we have such an excess. We get it on the internet. We get it little pamphlets, little tracks, books, magazines, you name it. We get it here, but there it's, it's so difficult. It's different. So we get it in their language. Everybody will have access. And of course, um, continuing the six-month courses, again, the light ministry, um, we would like to have that established all over the country, hopefully, in the interior as well. And then working to strengthen and establish the new ministries. Uh, graduates that come out of the six-month course, they can go into like what Henry had experienced with his students. They go from village to village, door to door, and uh, minister unto the unreached. Uh, bringing the gospel message and then, of course, the health message. Okay. Well, what a blessing, and, and we will pray for your future plans. Please. Is there anything else you'd like to just briefly share with our viewers today mm. about the plans the Lord has for you? Yes. Uh, basically, we want to set a base from where we can work, and so we are looking forward to buying a land and having a small uh, project going on there to have a studio and uh, so that is our greatest need, I feel. But we are doing all these things to be self-supportive because many doors that, will be op that are open now will be closed very soon. So we are hoping and praying that God could be able to uh, do this work. We need and covet their prayers very much. Thank you for sharing with us today, Joshua and Henry and Allison. And we will pray for your ministry there. There's so much need. Mm -hmm. Let me read this last quote that you've shared with mm -hmm. me today. The home of all those who expect soon to meet God should be miniature sanitariums. Then, and not until then, will be fulfilled some of those prophecies in the latter part of the book of Isaiah, relative to the wonderful position that the people of God are to occupy in the world just prior to the close of probation. In Isaiah 60, again, the Lord says, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. I would ask you to pray with me today for the ministry that you've heard about, for Joshua and his ministry, and the light ministry, and all these students that are being trained to be the light, as the Lord is talking about in Isaiah 60. Please pray with us, and thank you for watching the Mission TV show.